Hi class, how are you guys doing? All right, in this lecture, this is chapter two overview, we're gonna talk about emphasis uh, as one of the most important uh, principles of, of design. So I just wanna make a note that this lecture is meant to supplement your course material, specifically the course reading, um, which is from our textbook. Uh, specifically, this is chapter two on emphasis. So please be sure to read this, this chapter. It's done very well, it's very, very, um, detailed and it does a great job describing what you need to know so again this lecture is meant to supplement this chapter not to replace it so be sure to get to your review of both um, this lecture is is loosely based on the chapter so keep that in mind let's get started so i just want to kind of address some of the things here we're looking at in terms of emphasis so emphasis what is emphasis i think we've learned and we can jump right over to the course announcement here and we can take a look right here at emphasis so emphasis is the principle um that states the most important element on the page should be the most prominent the second it should be the second most prominent. And I think a really great way to look at emphasis is to think of a newspaper. Since we're all very intimately familiar with newspapers, we can look at emphasis and the creation of a hierarchy through emphasis by looking at a newspaper example. Specifically in the newspaper, the headline is typically the largest text, right? Then the subhead is typically a little bit smaller and maybe placed in italic. And then the body copy is even smaller than that. So the emphasis here is where? It's on the headline. Okay, now we add an image to that, and then we also have to look at where does the image fall in place of the, uh, the uh, uh, development of emphasis in a specific composition. Okay, so it's really important to understand that emphasis it, it, it's a way to give visual cues to let the viewer know what is the most important and prominent thing in the page and what does the designer intend on the viewer looking at first in the page, second, third, and following hierarchy therein. So why do we use emphasis? We use emphasis to, to let the viewer know what is the most important thing on the page. Um, which means we have to decide what is the most important thing on the page, right? So that means that when you're, when, whenever you're, 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 confronted with a situation where you have a project, typically you have to look at the project. You have to look and research that project to decide what are the most important factors in that project. Okay, so in our business card example this week, for example, we have to take a look at what are the most important elements in a business card and how can you emphasize those elements so the viewer knows that they're more important than the other elements on the page. In that example, think about my example from newspaper where the headline's the biggest, the subhead's a little bit smaller, less emphasis, the body copy's even smaller than that, less emphasis. We have to decide, of course, what is the most important thing in order to establish emphasis emphasis and uh, therein establishing visual hierarchy. Now hierarchy, there's two kinds of hierarchy folks. There's visual hierarchy and then there's basically informational or typographic hierarchy. So both go hand in hand. Okay, but if you if somebody is speaking to a typographic or informational hierarchy, they're referring specifically to the type on the page. Okay, what is your primary message? Of course, we have to figure that out first, right? Then we have to figure out what elements can we use to best communicate this primary message. Okay, so and let's say the primary message is something that's typographic. Okay, it's a typographic message. So how, what elements can we use to best communicate the primary message? So in in this in this example of week, I'll go back to my newspaper example. We would use scale, right? Largest, smaller, smallest to in, indicate um, the elements to best communicate the primary message. Let's move ahead. What is a secondary message? So a secondary message um, is is typical. A lot of times, um, um, secondary and tertiary messages. Um, excuse me. Uh, secondary and ter tertiary messages are often referred to as accent. So, <clears throat> quiz question. <clears throat> so anyway, think about that. Think about accent. How do we, how can we, we uh, add hierarchy and emphasis to secondary and tertiary messages while maintaining the hierarchy of the main message, the main emphasis, okay? So we're working in tiers or multiple layers of hierarchy. That's important to, to understand. Which element can affect the, uh, best communicate this tertiary message? Which element is most likely to attract or spark the reader's attention? So these are things that you have to think about while you're designing. I should say designing. I should say while you're planning the design for any specific piece. Let's move on to... Um, 
Okay, next page. Let's move on to um, how do we determine emphasis? Well, you take a look at the information and you decide what is absolutely essential. What is the most important thing? First of all, what absolutely needs to be included? Okay, what can be deleted? So this points to simplicity, guys. It points to simplicity. It points to several other principles dealing with simplicity, specifically things like Hicks Law, uh, Occam's Razor, all that point to the fact that every time you add something to a page, it takes away from what's already there. So using this principle, we can say, all right, we have a lot of information on a page. We can start looking at it and determining what we don't need. Okay, oh, oh, leaving only the most important information, then determining from what's left over what is the most important, the second most important, the third most important. We can use emphasis to let the viewer know and indicate to the viewer what is the most important, the second and third most important in terms of, of hierarchy. Okay, um, moving on. How do we create emphasis? Um, different techniques. Now, I want it's, 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 this, this page indicates to make it biggest, make it boldest, make it, make it brightest. Use things like style, size, color. Now, I want to make a, a, an important caveat here. Okay, this make it biggest, make it boldest, make, make it brightest. This is oops, this is is in context, guys. So it's not saying okay. So the biggest thing I want to take the the most important thing on the page and just make it biggest thing on the page. That's not relative to the page, guys. It's relative to the other elements on the page. Okay. So if you have three very small elements on a page, let's say use this example. We've got three dots on a page. Two are really small, this big, this big. We want emphasis on the third page, the third dot. Does it mean we have to make it this big? No, it just has to be bigger than the other two. Okay, so we don't want to take these things to extreme, and we don't want to just start making things big and bold. We want to really keep this in context and make sure you understand the relationship of elements on the page to the other elements on the page, okay? That, that's why I say in context, this in context. This is the most important thing you can understand about emphasis is that everything is, is related to the other elements on the page. So when it says make it biggest, it doesn't mean make it the biggest it can possibly be in a, in a composition. It means make it bigger than the other elements on the page. That's pretty important when you think about it. And then other different ways of establishing emphasis, style, size, color. Anytime you make something different than the other things on the page, you are establishing emphasis. Okay, let's go to um, emphasis um, and, and, and other ways of creating emphasis. Uh, special visual effects, uh, texture pattern, path, or shape. We can use to develop emphasis borders and or backgrounds. Isolating an element can emphasize that element. Diagonals and irregular shapes can, can draw attention to themselves. Direction. Direction. We learned about direction a little bit with leading lines during week one. So we can see that direction is, is a very effective way to, to um, create emphasis. I think they, the best example there was that. Remember the football ad from week one? The quarterback, we follow his, his eye, his eye line. This is, this is called direction. Remember his eye? Right across from his eye was the logo. Okay, that's direction. That's using direction to create emphasis. In that example, emphasis was created on the logo because it was following the direction that the quarterback's eyes were on the same vertical plane. Uh, we can use distortion to create um, emphasis. And of course, we can use some sort of an optical center to create emphasis. All right, to wrap up emphasis, we all want to talk a little bit about alignment. So alignment is, is something that creates good organization. Good organization can create emphasis, okay? So you're not only arranging elements that you're, um, uh, you're not only arranging the elements, you're creating a visual structure, okay? Visual structure helps the viewer understand what belongs together in terms of proximity, what elements on a page are related, closely related, more so closely related than the other elements. A good example here is business card. So, um, so uh, arranging the elements. So you would have your name and then a little separation, then the contact information. All the contact information should be grouped together, right? That makes sense. So you have the name, which is not part of the contact information, but that's a little bit away from the contact information. This way we're, we're structuring a visual environment based on a hierarchy, okay? All right, guys, that's what I have on emphasis. And again, the chapter in the book on emphasis is excellent. As it, the, the chapter, the, the book is great, guys. It's an older book, but these principles don't change. So the uh, book does a really fantastic job, and I'll be referring to the, to the book quite often throughout the entire uh, class. But in this p particular example, I just want to uh, uh, I mentioned the relevant importance of keeping up with the book and understanding that the lectures are based on the readings in the book. 
Okay, guys. All right, 10 minutes. I'm going to cut it off right here. Um, so that's emphasis. Any questions, comments, concerns, clarifications on emphasis, please let me know. I'll be glad to make any necessary clarifications. Thank you very much.